Good morning. Welcome to the uh, Good Life Meditation for uh, October 3rd, 2016. The, uh, this effort is nothing more than a daily exercise to uh, train and tune my mind, my uh, disposition, and my uh, attitude towards the uh, in in in, in to, to bring it in alignment with my uh, personal philosophy, which is itself nothing more than bits and pieces that I found along the way. It's funny how I look like a, a masked man with the opposite. You know, all dark and it's supposed to be the opposite. It's supposed to dark in the eyes. <laughs> I wonder if you can see more, figure out who it is through the eyes. You know, who's the opposite. Ah, anyway. So. There are three components of uh, this exercise. The first is the tricky one, the one that I, I'm still struggling to define, and that's where we lay out um, an, a foundation to uh, protect the individual from the welfare of the many. And I was listening to something interesting today that might help me with that. I'll come back to that in a second. The second is where I lay out the objectives of the good life. And the third is where I lay out the principles, or mainly remind myself of the principles. That's what it really is, reminding myself of these things, of the principles of the good life. So back to that first one. And I'm struggling to find a good way to, to, uh, to do this. And I think I found, I may, I may be onto a thread that may help. Basically it comes down to uh, the good life is a, way, is, is a way of living such that we're enhancing the well-being of ourselves and others, and of the planet, you know, the whole darn thing. Well-being de being defined as a, a state of enhanced, um, what's, the, what's the, there's the word that I can't quite find, of enhanced um, well, well-being. <laughs> well-being means that we're living healthier, happier, maybe longer and better than if we were not so well. It, it's an objective measure. For example, it, it's objectively a good thing to do things that improve the cleanliness of the water that we drink. You know, dirty, contaminated water, I think we'll just about anybody and a reasonable person would agree that uh, clean water is is is, fair, is uh, preferable to, to contaminated or dirty water. Likewise, uh, healthy, nutritious diets are better than diets uh, laden with uh, excess sugars, carbohydrates, and uh, preservatives. We can continue along those lines, you know, a regime of, uh, of, of good dental care, looking after the teeth, brushing the teeth, flossing, regular checkups is preferable to a life without attention to the teeth. So if you can expand this, you know, if you expand this out, you can, you can, you can break down propositions by looking at the, their impact on well-being. How does Proposition X, for example, uh, marriage equality. How does marriage equality break down in terms of improving the well-being of, of others, of human, of, 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 of animals like ourselves? <laughs> how does how does it do that? And I, I won't break into that argument, but you can then begin to, to layer it out, right? Finding finding looking at the various pieces, looking at the, if, if marriage equality existed, how would that impact society versus if we, if we don't allow marriage equality? And I think you can find ways to then uh, find objective truth in that and then make a decision. Well, the, the, the point though uh, that I try to caution is that you can, if you, you can do that and find things that are Again, to use, labor the word objective, you can find things, but it's, it's, it's the relevant term. You can find things that are objectively good for the group, but may not be objectively good for the individual. 
And there are some things that the individual has to relinquish in favor of the, of the, of the group. But there are other things that the individual should not be required to relinquish. And these are things such, such as what we define in our United States Bill of Rights and the Constitution is as individual rights. And these are things that we identify and we protect the individual from. And summed up very well in our Constitution with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Wow, you know, when you when I try to when I try to struggle to lay this stuff out myself, I really come to to realize just how hard it must have been and how much thought must have gone into the Constitution. Yeah, you know, the individual has the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I may just settle on that. Just, just leverage that from the Constitution and uh, describe that, you know, the Good Life Foundation consists of a recognition of the life, of the, of, of the rights of the individual to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I'm sure it will require further qualification. I'll bet you I can leverage the Constitution or the Bill of Rights even more. I like that. Okay, the second part is the, are the objectives to the, uh, the good life. And again, there are, there's a number three. There are three objectives. One is the development and maintenance of good sound principles. This is the seven that I'm going to talk about in a moment. Two, the uh, exercise of good emotional reactions to the circumstances of life. And with this one, I take a very stoic or even Buddhist uh, way of looking at things where... Um, Trying to be less emotional about the world, about what happens. You know, when the unexpected happens, either an expected good or an expected bad, or expected bad or expected good, unexpected good, or even when it, the expected does happen, to temper my mod, to temper my response. Like temperance is, you know, these things are all layered in temperance being the uh, fourth principle, to temper my response, to neither uh, exult too much or despair too much, but to, to expect the unexpected. It sounds so cliche. Beautiful mountains ahead. I just love the desert. And to, uh, to expect the unexpected, to be ready to Make, make my way with whatever burden or, or boon the world uh, rests upon my shoulders from moment to moment as best I can. Wow. And finding, uh, finding uh, deep sustenance in the moments as they, as they come, whatever circumstance I may be in. Even if I'm standing before the executioner, Perhaps uh, marvel for a moment at the sunrise over over the uh, over the rifleman's shoulders, or I feel the wind blowing across my skin just as, just before the bullets fly. So that's the exercise of good emotional reactions. The third is the performance of good actions. Again, measuring the world objectively, looking for uh, under, with an understanding of of how to uh, ascertain what what is good for the many and the few, and then to uh, perform actions that are in alignment with that. Pick up a piece of litter here and there. Choose an adopted stray rather than uh, a puppy farm. You know, drive as close to the speed limit as possible, conserving fuel and in better ensuring safety. Working hard and honestly, paying one's taxes. Recognizing one's own nature and living in accordance with that. And now I'm getting to the principles. There are seven principles on the, in the good life. The first is the uh, atomic principle. Hey, I said it right for once. The atomic principle is a uh, obser observation that uh, the world is made of bits and pieces. We are compounds, formed of compounds, made of molecules, turn turn atoms, subatomic particles, and if you get down deep enough, energy matter being a kind of a frozen form of energy 
constantly changing, moving towards a state of increased empathy, empathy, atrophy, atrophy, no, en entropy, <laughs> empathy, entropy, entropy. <laughs> Maybe a little truth in all that. And uh, when you see, when I keep that in mind, and this is what the purpose of this meditation is about, keeping it in my mind, keeping a forethought, of, when I exercise that every day, reversing this every day, as I get to work and things change, don't go the way I plan, my project doesn't flow the way I want, an issue comes up, a new project is handed to me that I didn't expect, nor did I, nor do I have the bandwidth to accommodate, I understand what it is, and I, or at least at least I'm comfortable with that fact. I, I'm not I'm not expecting otherwise. I'm expecting change, and I'm expecting impermanence, and I'm expecting that uh, if there's going to be a moment to enjoy the sunrise or the uh, wind upon my um, upon my skin, it's this moment right now, as I am doing as I speak in this incredible desert rough desert day ahead of me. Number two, the uh, social principle. No, I'm sorry, the principle of nature. Everything has a particular nature in the universe. It's the nature of a rock to uh, be stationary, to be uh, uh, relatively, its molecules really sta relatively static, to erode away under weathering chemical, atmospheric, uh, oh, oh, you know, uh, fluid, uh, uh, erosional, erosional capacity over time to not really be sensory of anything to be an inanimate object uh, to degrade into further inanimate objects smaller inanimate objects be impermeable, permanent, impermeable to things like my hand it's the nature of a rock I recognize that it's the nature of an automobile to uh, move to turn with wheels to start up to perform a purpose uh, have a particular uh, aim, not an aim, but a purpose is the right word. The, it's the nature of birds to, uh, the, at least the birds that fly, to either fly through the air, to fly through the sea, to walk those that are flightless, to uh, reproduce, uh, to consume, to breathe and die. It's the purpose of plants to, for the most part, be stationary, to convert uh, energy into, uh, into material foodstuffs, light energy into material food, foodstuffs, to reproduce. Uh, and to die because of it all. And it's, a, it's, the, it's the nature of individuals like myself and like you to uh, live in some way in, in accordance with uh, whatever the uh, construct is of their mind, either through nurture, nature, and both, or both, whatever we develop into, wherever our interests are, whatever our, our talents may be, to, uh, to seek after those and to live as best we can in accordance with those. You know, after I'm one of those average individuals that I have some things that are truly interest me and uh, really uh, uh, and bring out the muse in me that comes from walking alone in desolate places. It's basically my, I, I don't call it a purpose, I call it uh, my nature. Uh, I don't get to do it very much once every three weeks maybe for a day but I, I do it when I can and the other time I do the other things that are in my nature which is to be a good husband and father and citizen to go to work early in the morning like this and do my job make the money that I can pay the taxes make sure that my wife and daughter are well cared for myself and um, push the ball forward a little further in my small way in my uh, you know I'm a, social, I'm a civil servant push it forward a small way make this Society of ours is a little better for my being here. It's my nature. What's your nature? Are you living in accordance with that? Would it be nice to live further in accordance with it? To live my whole life walking alone in lonely places? It would be fun for a while. I don't think it would be uh, as profitable to, well, to the well-being of society as much as being a lowly civil servant is, in fact, with a periodic uh, venture into wild place in life. That's actually a better a better avenue for me. If I was to do it full time, I would have no relevance to uh, to the to those who do what I what I do now, or which are rank and file individuals, which is what I am, with a periodic uh, uh, exploit into uh, exceptional circumstances that I can bring back and, and find a way to relate back to those who are also pushing the ball forward in their own way. 
three, the social principle. The social principle is nothing more than a recognition that we humans are social animals, that uh, our best ends are social ends, living uh, to, to improve the welfare of this group, all of these individuals around me, and of the society, of the society, of, of the world, of the species that live with us and around us, of the planet itself, and ultimately making the universe a better place. Those are worthwhile ends. They're rich and deep and full of meaning. Meaning, is that the right word? No, that's not the right word. Virtue is the right word. Meaning, meaning is something altogether different, but it's easy to mix it up because you can say that virtue becomes your meaning, but that means it's ascribed in some way, and I don't think that's the case. We choose virtue as conscience, eight conscious agents. Now, here I am on 16 minutes. I don't know if this can continue. I may upload it even if it doesn't continue. I may run out of memory, but let's see what happens. Let's move on. Uh, number four, the uh, temperance. Temperance is the uh, conscious execution of restraint in everything. Eat, drink, sleep, work, play, sex, watching TV, swimming, exercise, whatever. Exercising restraint. Using our will and our bettered sense to, to not overdo it. Hiking too far into the wilderness. I need to exercise some restraint into that. Especially at my age. I'm going to kill myself if I keep that up. It, and the reason this is good is for two reasons. One, it helps us to control our consumption of resources. And two, it's good for its own sake. Because then, if you can exercise the will to, to moderate consumption, like I didn't do last night. I ate too much carbs last night for dinner. But if you can do that, then when... The unexpected happens, you can exercise, and your emotions start to run away, you can exercise control over that too. So, uh, controlling your emotions is a form of temperance, as I mentioned at the start of this video. And also, it's rich, rich, it's immediate virtue. Consumption, indulgence, there's no virtue in that whatsoever. It's simply pure hedonistic pleasure. Is hedonistic the right word? It's pure, pure pleasure. There's no virtue in that. Yet, exercising even the slightest restraint is, is an act just flowing over with virtue for the exercise purpose and for the restraint and for the benefits the uh, the dividends the immediate dividends of uh, of, of moderation that it, that it that it yields and of temperance that it yields next is uh, the great indifference great indifference is a recognition that the universe is just out there that uh, as far as intelligence love sentience this kind of thing it appears that uh, there's no more of it than we're right here with each other. A lot of us want to uh, believe there's more, believe that there's a God out there that's looking out for us and has some plan for us. Uh, there seems to be no evidence for that. There are although lots of conspiracy theories, but none of them, very few of them seem to have anything in common. That people are willing to perform atrocious uh, 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 acts upon one another over. Wouldn't, isn't it much better to simply look out and say, hey, I don't know. It, it's, it's empty. It appears to be devoid of any of any intelligence out there. I'm sure, there's a lot. There's mappings and and, and, and and principles and laws. At least these things that we call them out there. Uh, the speed of light. The uh, you know the the, the the physics. The properties of physics. But we don't know what the reason for these things. They're labels that we give to phenomena that we observe. That's all we know. We don't know beyond that. We don't know what would happen before the Big Bang or what could be if there is anything outside of our observable universe or if there's any sentience that guides and determines anything. We don't, we don't know. I'm not saying that it's not there. I'm just saying we don't have any good reason to believe it is. So better to, better to uh, carry on with what we do know cautiously and uh, continue to, to try to solve the problems. But don't make jump to conclusions in the meantime. That's the great indifference, looking out and saying, I don't know. Wow, it's big, it's huge, it's amazing. There it is. Six, reason, the governing faculty. The uh, capacity we have to make sense of the world, to look at facts, to form arguments and uh, models of reality that uh, we can then uh, make predictions about how the universe will behave or how it will, will, will 
perform or how as well as humans too then to look at those results and see if they're actually true and if so then to claim hey maybe we found something out about the universe and then to reinforce that and to hold on to it cautiously also this whole theory that i recently learned about uh, thesis antithesis and synthesis which is this way of of, of looking at the world and, and adding more information revising what we already know through synthesis and coming up with something new i think it's hegel maybe the philosopher i can't remember i can't keep philosophers names uh, that may have been the one that came up with that but I, I digress a little bit but it's an important one it's, it's a big one in my mind this whole progression knowing more growing more learning more and progressing and you see it in society all around the way things operate apparently and finally virtue hey it's almost 21 minutes i'm still running virtue let me wrap this up real quick virtue is the purpose of life as i as i see it as i choose to to make that the purpose of life and virtue is objective virtue is the objective a measure of, uh, as I said before, of what is in the bed, what improves the well-being, well, virtue, if we can agree that, vir that well-being is a good thing, then virtue is whatever improves the well-being of, of ourselves, our society, our species, our, pl and our, our planet, all the other species as well. But you find a, find virtue, live virtue through living the good life of, uh, of, of hey, we're still going, let's see if I can wrap this up. Virtue comes about, it falls like rain in the footsteps of the man or the woman or the child who lives their lives uh, recognizing that things are changing constantly, looking for the nature of themselves and others uh, by uh, pursuing social ends, uh, exercising temperance, uh, 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 recognizing the great indifference that, uh, and uh, using reason as the governing faculty. And there I made it almost 22 minutes and it's still recording. Maybe I can go a little longer next time, fill in a couple more details. I might, might do that. I have other things I want to add to this. It would be nice to do a few moments of uh, reflection of as to the day. Hey, by the way, if it stops now, it means it runs out of data, but that's okay. I've finished my meditation. But it would be nice to add something to this meditation, which would be a reflection of the coming challenges without giving out too much. You know, I don't want to, I, I work for, in a proprietary environment got to protect the privacy of it but uh, talk about you know some meetings that are coming up like I do have a meeting today at uh, 10 o'clock that's a challenging one proposing a new a new project plan for uh, to uh, the leader of our of the group that I'm working I've been recently assigned to very big complex one-year project that I'm going to do co-project co manager on with this with a, a supervisory as well and we're going to lay out our, our our proposal this is not a proper project plan but it's more of just a proposal of how we, as the uh, two project managers, would like to actually run this project, and I'm a little nervous about that. It's a new, new way of new approach to handling this, um, and it's a huge project, it's keeping me up at night, worrying about it. But if we can pull this off successfully, we will uh, benefit uh, this entire county where I work in uh, in very, very useful. If we're talking about pursuing, furthering the, the, the social good, we will be doing some great progress forward. And uh, I look forward to the chance to do that, although uh, I, 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 I have a lot of concerns and uh, I have to not let my emotions run away uh, I, with my concerns or with any uh, with undue co co uh, confidence that may come if my initial uh, pieces work out. We'll see. I'd like to do more of that. Maybe I can. Maybe I can find a section at the end. You know, why am I rushing? I don't make these videos for... Consumption. I mean, that doesn't mean that I don't care about anybody that sees that, sees this. It's just that this is this is a vehicle for me to 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 get ready for the day. To it's like a workout. It's like you know, get, going to the gym in the morning, exercising the body to make sure that you are a better physical specimen for the day. This is an exercise of my uh, philosophy and resolution, so that I can be uh, better prepared uh, as an individual to take on this day. There you go. I'm going to sign off for now. It's my off ramp right up here. 24 minutes. Wow. Talk to you later, everybody. Thanks for watching. If anybody watches. See you later.